Hi guys, how are you doing? So in this video, I want to share with you how you can start charging about $300 per hour for technical consulting. Uh, first, let me take you to the stages of the type of, uh, you know, engineer that you become over the over the period of years and where you need to be to start charging that kind of money, right? So in, in the stage one, this is, uh, you know, uh, one or two years of working as an engineer you're just an engineer right you uh, don't know much about platforms and systems and <clears throat> and how technology in generally uh, in general works you just uh, are focused on one particular type of language and you know very uh, you get uh, you know those particular type of problems as well you don't have a lot of perspective right but uh, after your stage two after let's say you've spent three years uh, two to three years in the in the in the industry you become a senior engineer that's where you know you have command over uh, one or two languages and then uh, you've worked on a couple of projects you've done a lot of stuff and you know how things work basically with uh, technology right and you have exposure to a lot of different technologies so this is stage two all right and then th then you have stage three stage three is uh, somebody who has become an engineer senior engineer and then after senior engineer uh, there are three parts that usually go out one is uh, the engineering management side where, where you're you know uh, responsible for deliveries and managing people then you're um, in the tech manager management side, I'll, I'll talk more about this. This is more like your architects and you know the cloud architect or those type of people. And then you have your product manager people. So I've made a dotted line here because not many people follow this uh, line, uh, but uh, it's it's coming up these days and it's becoming more and more common. So after engineering, uh, people don't follow the people manager or technical manager line. They follow the product manager line. All right. So I'll, I'll tell you the difference between these three. Engineering manager is somebody who's responsible for getting things delivered. He's responsible for managing the entire team, keeping their morales high, uh, you know, managing uh, how much work they're going to do each day. Uh, and it's basically a lot of people management involved, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, managing the stakeholders, you know, working with the product manager, working with uh, the CEO and, you know, all those people. The tech manager uh, is the architect and he basically manages the technology side of things. Not the people side of things, but the technology side of things. Let's say, you know, the architecting the entire uh, platform, and then you know, if things go wrong, then the developers, all these engineers and senior engineers, will come to him for advice and ask him a lot of questions. So that's uh, your stage three. Uh, now, when you know, people ask me which of these three paths should I choose. So let me tell you your if your priority is uh, if if you like working with people, if you like you know managing things, if you like delivering stuff. Uh, you know, and, and you want, you get an ego boost about, of, uh, you know, ha handling people, let's say, you know, 50 people, I've managed 60 people. So then engineering manager is the right role for you. Uh, if you, if you want to know which is the most profitable, uh, you know, role uh, out of these. So tech manager, like, you know, architect, that, that route is the most profitable. The reason for that is that you're here, you're building upon your, uh, you know, hard skills. So you, uh, you know, you start working with Kubernetes, you start working with Jenkins, you start working with, uh, you know, complete infrastructure like Terraform and all of those different things. So you'll be the person who will actually, you know, handling all of this. You'll probably be even doing ML ops and AI ops and all of those different things. You'll be, you know, building the infi entire infrastructure for those things. And this um, helps you to stay extremely on the cutting edge of technology. And this helps you to put all those, you know, different uh, like technical keywords on your CV because you've, you know, worked with all these different technologies. And this gives you so much more exposure to technology, right? You are in the throes of things. You know where AI is going. You know where ML is going. So this is what I recommend most people to become. And not this, not this, but this, you know, technical architect or tech, the managing or manager of tech, te uh, technology. Now, the reason why this is difficult is not only because uh, you have to be extremely good at technology, but you also have to be extremely good at telling, uh, you know, at, at avoiding these two roles. Because if you're working in a company, uh, people would want you to either become an engineering manager, you know, mostly. Uh, they, they would want to, they would push you to become an engineering manager because, uh, you know, the engineering teams might be expanding and they would think that, oh, you're the right person who can manage those teams. Or uh, you might, uh, you know, read a lot of articles where you might find this job to be really uh, glamorous and sexy, right? Product manager that, you know, let's become a product manager. You ha you get to man manage the entire product. But uh, let me tell you, uh, you know, from what I've seen in this industry, I've, I've spent a lot of years, uh, right? So this guy, uh, nobody can function without this guy, right? He is, uh, everybody revolves around him. You might think it's a product manager who runs things, but it's actually 
uh, or or you might think that the engineering manager is you know who's who has the stick in his hand he's telling all the engineers to do stuff but it's actually this guy nobody can afford to mess with this guy in a company and um, and, and i'll show you why actually uh, so when you get to stage four the engineering manager might become director of engineering right and the tech uh, manager will become solution or application architect now this guy starts making uh, a lot more salary so director of engineering will get let's say if you're in the us uh, you'll get uh, you know i don't know 300k or whatever salary senior product manager 350k this guy can ask for anything he can ask for uh, at this stage he can ask for 500k or 450k something like that right and now this is this is uh, information that you don't often get told uh, i had to actually go through these uh, stages to understand uh, what these stages are and which one which which one is more important which one is more uh, you know profitable or uh, worth worth going for and i'll tell you why it's profitable right in a, in a minute so let's go to stage five in stage five you see something uh, interesting happening uh, you have the in, ten, in about 10 years time the product manager guy becomes vp of product all right and the director of engineering becomes vp of engineering and sometimes these guys become CTOs as well. Sometimes, not always, but uh, sometimes these guys become CTO as well. But the guy who becomes CTO most often is this guy who became the technical architect and then he became the solution or cloud or application or enterprise architect. And then he gets picked up as a CTO of a, of a smaller company. So let's say you're, you're a solution architect in a company which is a Fortune 500 company. You will easily become a CTO in a smaller company, all right, in, in about 10 years time. At this stage, you have complete control over cloud infra, DevOps, and all the process, technical processes, and you know, getting everything laid out. You're the head of technology, right? You you control everything. That's if if you're in an, if you're in an engineering first company, this is the most most important role. Everything revolves around you. Trust me when I say that, right? Everything. If you're an engineering first company, which basically has a tech tech product out there in the market, and you're a CTO of that company, everything revolves around you because everybody wants to know, you know, is, can this feature be built? Should we be building this feature? Whatever technology should we be building? How can we innovate? You're you're the guy who is responsible for taking technology forward, which is basically innovation, right? These guys have nothing to do with innovation, the VP of engineering guys. VP of product has nothing to do with innovation. I mean, they can come up with the features, but they won't know how can you innovate. Only the CTO would know how to innovate in the sense, you know, how can you use a technology, what type of patents to file, and uh, how can you, you know, innovate on the technology itself or, you know, provide something new. In the sense, like, let me give you an example. Uh, you, you know Docker and Kubernetes, right? All these type of technologies. A product guy couldn't have come out with those technologies. An engineering, VP engineering guy couldn't have come out. Only the CTO would know, right? You know, that this can be reused and con converted into a technology called Docker, which we can, you know, sell or like open source it and sell outside. Or let's say, you know, Redux or GraphQL. If you if you watch the GraphQL documentary on YouTube, uh, I highly recommend you do that. It's somebody, you know, from this uh, like like a extreme super developer, right? Who basically thinks that okay, GraphQL can be a product and let's out open source it and anybody uh, in the world can use it. So it's these guys that are coming with the ideas of innovation and these guys are who are launching uh, products like graphql docker kubernetes all of those products not these guys not these guys these guys will not, not even know what graphql is and why to create it and you know what what problem it solves only these guys will know it so when you're at the center of innovation when you're the most important guy in a, in a technology company you can ask for any any amount of money that you want right and so i've been here uh, but i've been starting to do something else as well on the side so on the side now, when you're this important, right? When you're this important guy, now everybody wants to consult you. So let's say there's another company based in the US, they have a similar problem and you've already solved those problems. Now they want to ask you about those problems in the sense, you know, if I have this uh, in infra, uh, you know, and I'm having problems in this exact part, let's say I'm having the problems in the ML ops or we're generating so much data, where do I store this data? How do I run operations on that data? Like, let's say it's a big data problem. That's what many people come to me for, big data problems, right? So then you can uh, consult them for, for an hour, let's say, and then you can charge them uh, $300 per hour. Now, uh, I'm still charging very less because I'm, I'm based in India and I don't really uh, you know need more than this, but uh, there are people I know that charge somewhere around $1,000 and $2,000 per hour as well. Uh, in for same type of consultancy because uh, and people are ready to pay two thousand dollars per hour the reason for that is that 
when somebody is calling a guy like this right they're in deep shit they're they're in a big problem they're in a problem that not uh, no none of their developers or engineering team combined is able to solve right let's say it's a big data problem uh, or, or an ml ops ml ops problem and those problems are really central in the sense you're suddenly generating so much data you're not getting the right insights that's a that's a big data that's a huge problem right for big data and uh, somebody like a CTO can solve it, uh, or at least guide them on how to solve it. So that's why companies are ready to pay uh, a lot of money. Uh, so, uh, so it's not about being a really good. So I, I know, I know there are videos on YouTube where people will have you believe that it's actually uh, your negotiation skills that can get you that kind of money. It's not. It's actually where you are and how important you are in the whole ecosystem, where you can start charging whatever you want. So here, in, at this stage, not only are you making money uh, by you know, being in a company and earning a CTO salary, which is huge, which is a huge salary. But you also start, uh, you know, getting a lot, a lot of these consulting um, projects. That's where you basically uh, can charge uh, a lot of money by the a lot of money by the hour. All right. So I hope uh, these five stages are clear to you and things make sense. Now, in many companies, uh, these are not the career paths, uh, but you need to find the companies which have these kind of career paths because there are many of those. So just make sure you uh, reach here somehow, maybe through here or through here, wherever, man. You just need to reach here. Like you know, you need to stay in the technology management space. And by the way, I've also seen that when these guys, director of engineering, try for something like this later on, when they when they realize that no, I've been just managing people and I've not actually been been doing, I've not you know stayed in touch with technology, and they want to become something like this later on, it's almost impossible for them to become this because they have just they just don't have the technical expertise to become this anymore. And they have a huge problem becoming a CTO as well. All right. So try to be in this line is what I'm trying to say here. So I'm sharing information with you, which, uh, you know, took me years to get. And this will completely sort out your career if you do exactly what I'm saying. And thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. But do subscribe to this channel so that you come to know when, uh, you know, I create awesome content like this. Thank you.